In this video, I will guide you to deploy your first app using Coolify, and I will explain the different build packs Coolify have. I won't be going very in-depth like a crash course, but I will get you started so you can explore more on your own comfortably. This is a brand new Coolify installation, so I don't have anything running here. First, let's create our project. A project is just like a folder. You can have unlimited number of applications inside a project. This is helpful if you are hosting application for different purpose like hobby projects and client projects. Inside each project, you can have different environments. When you create a new project, a production environment will be automatically created by Coolify. Environment don't have huge benefits. It's just helpful to organize your applications and set environment variables for each environment. Inside the environments, you can have resource. Resources are the apps you deploy using Coolify. So your static website, database, full stack apps, all are called as resources. If you click on this add new resource button, then you will see huge list of options. The resources on this page are grouped into three different sections like applications, databases, and services. Applications are split into two different categories, Git-based applications and Docker-based applications. If your app's code base is on Git-based platforms like GitHub or GitLab, then you can use any one of these Git-based options. If the apps you want to deploy already have a Docker image that is available publicly, then you can choose one of the Docker-based options. Database section have few different popular databases. These databases are pre-configured, so you can deploy them very easily without too much effort. The services section have a lot of services. These services are popular open source softwares like Active Pieces, and these are pre-configured so you can deploy them very easily. Sometimes you will have to set up few environment variables for them to work. Everything you deploy using Coolify will be deployed as a Docker container. So no matter which option you choose here, it will be deployed as a Docker container. For this video, I will deploy a static website from my public GitHub repository. So I will choose the first option on Git-based application section, which is public repository. It asks for the link to our GitHub repository. So first I will show you what I have in my repository, then I will enter the link here. This is a public repository I created just for you guys watching this video. This has few folders like static, full static, Docker and Docker compose, these are different types of deployments, and I will show how to deploy each of them in this video. First, I will open this full static folder. Here I have a fully static website code base. I just used Astro to generate these files. Now I will copy this URL and paste it on Coolify and click on Check Repository. Now it shows more options. It automatically detected the correct GitHub branch from the link, and the base directory is also correct. For build pack, the Nix packs will be selected by default. Clicking it will show you other build packs Coolify has. Everything you deploy using Coolify will be deployed as a Docker container. So to run a Docker container, you need a Docker image. The build pack you select here decides how your app is deployed. I will show you how each options work by deploying a website using each of this build packs. For now, I will explain it in few words. Nixpax will scan your code base and generates a Docker file for your app. Then it will use that Docker file to build a Docker image for your app and starts a container using the Docker image. I don't recommend using this Nixpax because it's very inefficient. You will know why I say this later in this video. Here you have to enter the port number where your app will listens to incoming requests. If you enter a wrong port number here, then you will see error message like 404 or no available server. If your app generates fully static content after the build time, then you have to enable this option and enter the directory name where the generated static content will be on. If you have enabled this option, then Nixpax will start a container with an Nginx web server and your apps build output files, so the web server will serve the static content to your users. Next is static build pack. This option assumes you already built your app or website from somewhere else and you only have the static content on your repo like I have here. So this option will build a Docker image with your static files and an Nginx web server. So the web server will serve the static content. Next is Dockerfile. This option will build a Docker image and starts a Docker container by using the Docker file you have on your repository. The last one is Docker Compose. It's similar to Dockerfile, but here it will use the Docker Compose file you have on your repository. Here you have to enter the location of your Compose file. The file extension, 
should be same of the compose file you have on your repository, otherwise it will show an error message. First, I will deploy a static website using the static build pack, then I will show the other packs one by one. Once you click on continue, you will be on this page, here you will configure your app settings. Here we have a lot of options, but I only cover the necessary option for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you want a video on explaining all the options we have here. You can give whatever name you want to this resource. Here you can change the build pack if you want. And here you can select the web server which will be used to serve your static website. At the moment of recording this video, you can only select Nginx Alpine here. You can add your own configurations for Nginx here. If you already know how to configure Nginx, then first you have to click this Generate button, then you have to edit the configuration from here. Next is Domains, a very important option. You can see here that Coolify generated a domain for me automatically. The first part of the domain is the application ID, which is the one you see here. Next is your server IP address and the top level domain slip.io. You can get a free domain from this slip.io like this. This is good for testing purpose, but for production, we have to enter our domain. So I will enter my domain here as aeroflare.cloud. For this domain to work, we have to add a DNS record that points to this server IP address. Here I have two A records. One targets the apex of the domain, which is aeroflare.cloud. Some DNS providers shows this as a at symbol, then other A record, which is targets a asterisk. Whenever you want to use a subdomain, you have to add a DNS record, and this becomes a huge headache if you have a lot of different apps to deploy. So I add an asterisk like this, which is a wildcard record, so I don't have to add new A record whenever I want to use a subdomain. This wildcard record take care of the DNS side of things. Here I have entered a local IP address, but you should enter your server's public IP address. If you enter a local IP address like this, then it won't work. I have a different local setup, which works without this DNS records. Now let's go back to Coolify dashboard and deploy the app. I will just click on deploy button and Coolify will build the Docker image and start a Docker container. The deployment took around 30 seconds to complete. Now let's visit our website and see if it works. The website works fine and the URL doesn't have the 3W. So if I add the 3W, then it will show an error message no available server. We have to make a small change on Coolify to make this work. On the domains, we only have the domain for the non-3w version, so we have to add the 3w version here. Keep in mind that you shouldn't have any spaces on this field, and you have to separate the domain using a comma. Below the domains, we have redirection, so if you want your website to be accessible on both 3w version and non-3w version, then choose this option. This will redirect everyone to 3w version, and this will do the opposite. I will set it to allow both just for this video and click on restart. Now if I reload the page, it will work on 3W version as well. Now I will delete this app and deploy it using the Nixpax build pack. Before I delete this app, I wanna show you the Docker image size of this app because I wanna compare it with Nixpax later on. On Coolify dashboard, we can access our server's terminal. So I will connect to localhost which is the server where Coolify is running now. Now, if I run Docker images, then it will show all the Docker images. The image Coolify built using the static build pack is around 50 megabytes. Now let's try to deploy the same app using Nixpax as build pack. I will go to my repository and open the Astro folder inside the static folder. This is a simple static site generator that generates static files on an output directory called dist. I will copy the URL and use it on Coolify. I will choose public repository same as before and choose the build pack as Nixpax. This is a fully static website, so we don't need any ports. Since it's a static site, I will check this option and I will leave the published directory as the default because it's correct. The domain looks same as before, but this time the first part is only different but I don't wanna have this weird domain to be generated by default. So I will go to the server's page from the sidebar and enter my domain here as wildcard domain. This will ask, are you sure that you wanna change this? Don't panic after you see this red message, just click save. Now, if I delete this app and create it again, it should generate a subdomain of the domain I entered as wildcard.
See, now the domain doesn't have that IP address. This will just make your life a bit easier if you deploy a lot of new apps. We covered most of the settings before, so I will click on Deploy. The deployment took six minutes to complete. If we visit the domain, it works fine like before. Let's check the Docker image size that Nixback built. It's over 750 megabytes. Behind the scene, Nixback analyzed my code base and wrote a Docker file. Then it built the Docker image using that Docker file. Now I will deploy the same app using my own Docker file. I will go to the Astro folder inside the Docker folder on my GitHub repository. Before I deploy this, I want to explain you what this Docker file does. So this is the same code base I used for Nixbacks, but this one has my own Docker file, so Coolify will use this Docker file to build the Docker image. This is a multi-stage Docker file. So in first stage, it will build the app using Bun. Then on second stage, it spins up Nginx web server and copies the output static files from the previous step to the Nginx directory. Then it exposes the Nginx web server to port 8080. I will deploy this to Coolify like I did before. I have selected Dockerfile as build pack. If you scroll down here, you can see port expose as 3000, and you have to change this to the port you are exposing in your Dockerfile. On my Dockerfile, I expose port 8080, so I will change this to port 8080. Coolify proxy routes the incoming requests based on the container labels. These are the container labels for this app. By default, you won't be able to edit it unless you uncheck this option. But if you are new to Proxy and Coolify, then don't touch this. Coolify will automatically update the labels based on the changes you make on the dashboard by default. Now I will deploy this. The deployment took one minute to complete. Let's check the Docker image size. It's less than 60 megabytes, so this Dockerfile-based deployment is very fast and lightweight when compared to Nixbax. Now I will delete this app and deploy it using Docker Compose. I will go to the Astro folder inside the Docker Compose folder on my repository. This is the same code base as the previous Dockerfile code base, but I have a new file called Docker Compose here. This Compose will build the app using the Dockerfile and uses a special environment variable for the domains. This variable is unique to Coolify. This will expose the port 8080 automatically and ask you to enter your domain on the dashboard. I will deploy this like I did before. Here you have to make sure this compose file extension is same as the compose file you have on the repository. Here it shows the extension as .yaml, but on repository it has the extension as .yml. So I have to update the extension on Coolify to be .yml. It loaded the compose file correctly, but if you see any error here, then make sure the Docker compose location and the extension is correct. Here it asks for my domain, so I will enter aeroflare.cloud and I will deploy it. The deployment took about one minute to complete. Visiting the link works. Let's check the Docker image size. It's same as the Docker file deployment. That's it for this video. On the next video, I have planned to teach you deploying an app from a private GitHub repository by installing the GitHub app. This video took few weeks to prepare and fully finish it, so if you learned something new or found this video to be useful, consider leaving a nice comment below this video, so it motivates me to upload more videos like this.